Hello everyone, Miss Meek here, and today we are going to talk about angle relationships in triangles. So we're going to talk about the angle relationships in triangles. Um, specifically, we're going to be talking about isosceles and equilateral triangles. There's a couple of fun little things about those two types of triangles that give you some hints or some clues, enough information to find missing pieces of the other angles. And so that's what we're going to really be focused on today. So uh, let's talk about isosceles triangles. Now, I saw these triangles, the main thing that we know about them is that they have two equal sides. As you can see here, remember that those little tick marks here show us which two sides are equal, okay? Um, now, a fun fact about I saw these triangles that we haven't talked about before is the angles opposite of those sides. So, we'll label this. Let's call this triangle A, B, C. So, we're talking about angle A here and angle C, those angles actually are equal as well. So angle A equals angle C. And so that's a little fun fact. Because these sides are equal, the angles that they are connected to are also equal. So angle A down there and angle C are going to be equal. And we can use that. So if I know what angle A is, I can use that information to figure out what angle C is because they should be the same. So if they gave me angle A, say angle A is 30 degrees, I also know, hey, angle C is also going to be 30 degrees. So I can get those two angles of that triangle. Now something cool happens with equilateral triangles as well. We know this is an equilateral triangle because we see these three tick marks here. We also see that each side equals six and equilateral triangles have all equal sides. Now because all of the sides are equal, that also makes all of these angles here equal as well. So again, if we label this triangle D, E, F, what this is telling us is that angle D here is going to be equal to angle E, which is going to be equal to angle F. And they're not just going to equal just anything. For all three angles of the, the triangle to be equal, they all have to equal 60 degrees. Because remember, all of our angles in a triangle have to add up to 180. And if they're all supposed to be the same, 180 divided by 3 is 60. So that means that all of our triangle or all of our angles in an equilateral triangle actually equal 60 degrees. So if I know that, if I recognize, oh, I have an equilateral triangle, all the angles are 60 degrees, I can use that information to find a missing piece of an angle in an equilateral triangle. So let's go ahead and apply this knowledge to some practice problems. Here on number one, I see that I have tick marks on all three sides, which means that this is an equal lateral triangle. That tells me that all of these angles here in this triangle are supposed to be 60 degrees, including this one where we're missing a piece of it. Well, when I understand that, hey, W plus 10 is supposed to equal 60, that actually gives me an equation to use in order to find what W is supposed to be. 10 is being added to W, so I'm going to undo that on both sides. When I do that, those 10s are going to go away, leaving me W, and 60 minus 10 is 50. So that tells me that this needs to be a 50, because 50 plus 10 will give me the 60 that that angle is supposed to equal. So the missing piece of that angle, what I'm missing there, is 50, 50. All right, uh, taking a look at number two here, uh, I see two tick marks, which means that this is an isosceles triangle. It has two equal sides, which also means that these angles opposite of these equal sides here are equal. So this angle here is 50 degrees. This angle right here is also supposed to equal 50 degrees. That gives me an equation to work with. 5x is supposed to equal 50 degrees. Well, what's happening to x, we're multiplying by 5, so to undo that, I'm going to divide by 5 on both sides. These 5s are going to go away, leaving me x, and 50 divided by 5 is 10. So that tells me that this x right here needs to be a 10 in order to get the 50 degrees that that angle is supposed to equal. So again, it's really cool that you can use equilateral and isosceles triangles, some of the facts about them, uh, in order to find missing pieces of angles. It comes very much in handy. All right, I hope this clears up any confusion you had about finding the angle relationships inside of equilateral and isosceles triangles. And I'll talk to you later. Bye!